The Houston Rockets thievery is questionable and quite frankly should be studied, so here we are. Reputable writer from Bleacher Report Jonathan Wasserman projected that Houston's newest Big East All-Freshman and Big East Freshman of the Year out of Villanova would be a top 8 pick. Michael Scotto of HoopsHype.com projected that he'd be a top 5 pick. Cam Whitmore was the FIBA Under-18 America's Championship MVP in 2022. That year also saw the perimeter-savvy athletic phenom become a McDonald's All-American, as well as both qualify for the Jordan Brand Classic and Nike Hoop Summit. Despite a magnificent freshman campaign that should have cemented him as a top 10 pick at the very least, most NBA scouts weren't buying Cam's upside. Sources told John Hollinger of The Athletic that Whitmore's medicals were red flagged by some teams due to concerns about his knees, while his workouts and interviews were also underwhelming. One source described Whitmore as quote-unquote comatose during the pre-draft evaluations. Casting those seemingly nonsensical scouting evaluations aside himself, Whitmore responded to them by saying, I've been overlooked a lot of times in my life, so it didn't really phase me. I'm just happy to be in the NBA. I've been dreaming about that all my life. In terms of the medical rumors, Whitmore said, I have no idea. The media swirling regarding Whitmore's bad draft workouts seem increasingly sketchy when you factor in that he became the 2K24 Las Vegas Summer League MVP. You'll see what made GMs pass on this man, the reason that may have been a monumentally bad call for some of them, and see a hybrid player comparison for the versatile beast putting Odenton Maryland on the map in Cam Whitmore. Right quick, just 15.7% of you are subscribed, so please subscribe. And for a follow back, follow at dflowhoops on Instagram and Twitter. Back to the content. So tape from a month ago has been leaked of Houston's front office heading to draft night. Gentlemen, it is time to make something of ourselves. Get your horses ready. We have a train to rob. Not only did potentially the most dominant wing from the 2023 draft and Eamon Thompson fall right into Houston's lap at pick number four, who we covered in this video right here, but GM Raphael Stone also capitalized on the inconceivable. Cameron Whitmore remained in the draft room until Houston's second pick of the draft, all the way down at pick number 20. Whitmore's speedily forceful athleticism leading to deadly hang time in conjunction with strike-generating fortitude off the bounce and NBA-ready, fundamentally sound jump shooting mechanics allowed him to display an aptitude to get it done from all three levels of the floor during the summer. You'll see how he displayed said special upside, then you'll find out the odd reason for why he was passed up on 19 times. Cam was named Summer League MVP for leading the Rockets into the tournament finals, despite the team's initial top player, Eamon, getting shut down after one game. Whitmore averaged 19 points per game on a slightly above average 44.7% from the field, and a slightly below average 28.6% from three-point range. Like his deep range shot, Cam's 62.5% stroke from the foul line needs to be better as well. His 105.9 defensive rating equated to what would have been the best in the 2023 postseason, just ahead of Dennis Schroeder. He racked up 15 steals over six summer league outings, a 2.5 per game average. Going back to his three-point range and charity stripe efficiency though, he shot 34.3% from three and 70.3% from the foul line at Villanova. Cam's proven to be a through-and-through -through polished offensive talent. In the summer, he took over eight threes per game and had to carry a brunt of the scoring load with Eamon being out. Still, Whitmore showed the capacity to move well without the ball. Even on plays like this one where his point guard over dribbles, he nicely times up an evasive backdoor cut at the back end of the 24. Coming off the pin down, taking the composure to traverse this ball screen, going with a triple threat momentum cross to his off hand, he then scampers through the corner defender's stunt with a low dribble sweep through before 1 2 stepping into the lane, putting his shoulder down to fend off contact while hanging in the air for a back breaking reverse, not to mention and one. Whitmore triggers a 3-on-2 fast break with Eamon and Tari, but he does it all himself here by utilizing multiple push-ahead dribbles and some devastating running long jump. The run out of Whitmore! 
Ready as a spaced out wing option after this first DHO attempt is shut down, working on a soon to be sophomore who played 80 games in 2022 23, Shaden Sharp, a drive into his jab step in the opposite direction of the ball screen, gets Sharp leaning, and watch how he resembles the 6 foot 7 version of Westbrook. Now Westbrook drives at Hollins, knowing that he's got Damn, Whitmore through contact. He's going to fill out the lane after using the off ball, receiving the DHO. From there, immediately momentum into the lane and get downhill for a drifting in masterpiece. His speed plus hang time by themselves should net him around 5 to 7 points per game, strictly on fast break opportunities as such, where he calmly collects the in traffic long inbounds outlet and breaks out his patented 1 2 hop step. You know Cam has the potential to be an immediate 15 plus point per game score when he blends Westbrook-esque finishing and hops with Harden-esque ISO bucket getting. He gets in an over-dribbling Curry slash Prime Harden mode right here, but displays more than enough competence to be taking such a contested deep range look. Despite having isolation prowess to turn to, you like that he doesn't need the rock in his hands to thrive. Like so many of the clips you've seen, he starts this eventually converted bucket moving without the ball, giving space for Jermaine Samuel to set the flare. Watch the fundamentally elusive track runner-like stance on the catch which we talk about so often in these breakdowns, as that gets the closeout defender thinking face up and immediate jab step. Conversely, it's a monster first step past said closeout defender followed by two under control low dribble lefties and a thunderous two handed hammer off two feet. Back to my point about how Cam's combo of fast break speed and springiness will make him a top transition scorer, and he exemplifies that right here with two quick twitch high IQ beat him to the punch attacks directly off the opening tap. We'll cap off a breakdown of his offensive bag by featuring some of Whitmore's mid-range game. After a smooth corner retrieval, a couple dicey jab steps and singular sweep through to his left open up the door for a slight drive entry and step back, and he releases the shot with such a fundamentally L-shaped trigger, if you only watched the jumper, you'd have thought he was spotting up. Same thing goes for this albeit non-mid-range but still similar shot off the bounce from the corner, that release is just damn poised. Right back to the middies though, as while gathering the DHO, he's forced to simultaneously rip through to avoid the top locking defender. That's followed by an in and out dribble around his own teammate who's setting the screen on air, then a stop on a dime hezzy bounce in tween leads to a step back, and someone better tell Wiseman to press up and drop coverage. On the topic of defense, watch the yielding footwork to jump forward once with his lead foot, using it to gain leverage for a second two-step jump, allowing Cam to get back in the vicinity to spring up for a monster chase down. Noticing that both his low man is in position and the opponent's right-sided passing lane is clogged, Cam takes a good risk that he'll pick off the pass and not get caught out of position, starting his stride even before the pass is released, surely getting the interception. He again notices all other passing outlets are clogged and shows off elite defensive awareness by doing the same thing, blitzing the passing lane and getting a bucket out of it. In terms of why so many teams passed on Cam Whitmore, what's interesting is how they passed on him for attitude issues which were unclear. Aforementioned reports stated quote unquote concerns about his knees, but the only setback Whitmore suffered at the collegiate level was a broken thumb in the preseason. In addition to the reports mentioned earlier, concerns about Cam's shooting and intensity arose during his individual team workouts leading up to the draft. My question is, are these draft experts getting overzealous by valuing these workouts too much? Instead of looking at a much wider sample size and intensified environment, for example the confines of an entire college season, the more draft steals there are, which there seems to be more of annually, the more draft scouts get exposed. It may be time for some front offices to make some changes in their respective scouting departments, I digress. This offseason, Houston's proceeded to sign two champions in Fred Van Vliet and Jeff Green, in addition to a former rotation player on a Western Conference contender in Dylan Brooks. Prior to that, 
with the youthfully expeditious talent whom they drafted on the wing being point forward Eamon Thompson and the aforementioned Cam Whitmore. On top of that, Houston's developing core of Jalen Green, Alperin Shengun, Jabari Smith Jr., the latter of whom in Smith Jr., like Eamon Thompson, was also broken down in a separate video, are all on track to take massive steps forward in terms of their 23-24 production value. Where will H-Town finish in the West this upcoming season in your opinion though? I want to know your take down below in the comments section. This was your boy D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.